when making these climbers, there's a lot of times where um, I, I pretty much make them for inventory with a 90 degree or square. So that's just like in the beginning of the video when you saw me uh, using the square to kind of make those um, perfect 90 degree angles and to kind of cut them down. But you can always take those um, after you've done the carving and kind of round those paws out to be a little bit more adaptive to like a round tree scenario. Um, but you can, just depends on how you want to make it because um, the most difficult thing is to scribe it to say a log that's going to be uneven. In, in this scenario, you know, you pretty much guarantee that if anybody puts it on any square corner from a four by four or a six by six, or even the corner of a building that you're gonna have a nice fit and it's gonna look good. So that's why I decided to do it like that. And I've been doing that for, for quite a while, but you know, I really enjoy making the the, uh, the little black bears. They all have such character. Uh, make them looking over left shoulder or right shoulder or um, you know different positions with the legs. You know, the bigger the wood, the more um, possibilities you have for hand and, and body position. Uh, but for just like production bears, I usually make them in just like probably a handful of about three or four positions in various ways. And then when we're doing shows or when people visit the studio, uh, it's generally speaking how I always sell most of the climbers. Whenever you throw your chain, uh, one of the things you need to really consider is... Um, well, ask yourself why was my chain too loose or did something go wrong, but you always want to inspect your bar too. I want to feel, I could feel there's a couple little kind of burrs as a result of the chain being thrown. So I want to make sure and polish those off because that little tiny thing can turn into a big giant hole along your rail if you don't polish it out. One of the things I like to do is uh, use a hacksaw blade, uh, not the cutting side, but the dull side, and wrap a piece of sandpaper. And it's just thick enough to really just go in and, and clean the rails out. If there's any little burrs in there, I think I'm using 220 here. I wouldn't use anything too much coarser than that. But, uh, Just give it a good run of your finger. Make sure everything's smooth and make sure the surface here is, that doesn't have any sort of burr on it as well. You can just lay it flat, kind of polish it out. Good way to know whether your bar is overheating as well is, is you'll have bluing here. So if I ever fix my bar, I want to sand off all the bluing so I know that if it uh, starts overheating again, blow out these holes. This is where your oiler delivers um, oil to your chain. So basically, as the chain sits in this groove here, the drive links, which are the bottom part of the chain here, they have little, they'll pick up the oil as it's pushed through that hole. So if you've got a piece of debris in there, then your oiler's not gonna operate properly.
Also, you want to be careful when you're spinning your chain. You always want to spin it this way in case your finger slips. You're not going to be going against the cutting edge. Something's bounding up here. Must be a little spot on here. Anyway, you gotta wanna make sure you get good free movement. Don't know where it's binding up. Right there. So I took the cover off again, and you can see that. This is the part where it's binding up is right on here. So chances are when it, when it threw that chain, it threw and got a little damage to uh, the drive link, which if you just tried to keep going with that, that would be a point of friction. And of course, friction means heat. So I wanna make sure I can feel that side of the drive link and I'm pretty sure I feel a little bare there so got a little needle file I'm gonna just give a little tiny file to all the drive links on either side of that too Flip it over. Wouldn't be a bad idea too to uh, mark that drive link with like a sharpie so you don't lose your spot. See right there, just a little bit of a shiny spot. All right. Go ahead and put it back on. Give it a spin. Now it's spinning nice and free, not getting hung up on anything. So I'll go ahead and put it back together. And the common question that every chainsaw carver gets is, isn't your chain too loose? And the answer to that question is, uh, no, not really. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. I kind of like to get it close to where the drive link's almost kissing the bottom of the rail. Down there, that's about right. Some of it depends on what exactly you're doing and how loose you want to run your chain, but ideally you want to run it as tight as you can without the chain overheating. All right, nice and free. I guess the other thing you want to take a look at while you are got the saw stopped is, is when you threw your chain, did you nick any little um, teeth? So you might just run your manual swipe of your, just touch up your teeth a little bit. Try to get the lighting just right. If you do, then you could be able to see the, the, if there's any little unsharpened part of your tooth, then it's gonna show up because the light will reflect differently than the rest of the tooth. I'm actually kind of surprised um, as many bears as I've done how often I still continue to use spray paint for reference. I don't know, maybe it's just that I've gotten used to it. I mean, I don't need to do it, um, but I just, I don't know. I kind of just feel like it helps me establish some of the, the um, 
if you want to think of it like the, the underbody or the, the anatomy of the, the bear. So pretty much when I'm drawing those features, it's, um, you know, it's, it's bone features that I'm drawing because it's that movement kind of helps me see the position of, um, of the arms and, and how I kind of move through the sculpture. So a lot of times I'll be carving, I'll just keep a, a cheap can of uh, some really inexpensive spray paint, a couple bucks a can, and I just sort of shoot some lines in there really quick. trying to do a little bit of a layout and imagine what I'm gonna do for a like a full sculpture with multi figures um, and it's funny how even when I do my lines like that I still they end up getting moved a little bit so uh, I don't know I guess I wouldn't really recommend spending too much time drawing out you know with paint or even uh, crayon or however you you know use to to do your your sketching on a piece of wood um, the it's just different. Chainsaw carving is a little bit different, you know, like a lot of times people who are cutting out like um, fish and birds and smaller sculptures have like actually a perfect profile and they'll go so far as to sort of laminate a piece of wood, a piece of uh, transfer paper or something onto the wood and then put it on the bandsaw and just cut out the whole thing. And, and that's, I mean, that's a great way to do it, but you can't manipulate um, a whole log as easily as you can some of these smaller pieces. So I don't know, maybe it's just because, you know, I'm self-taught, so I don't really have a strong um, background in sculpting um, in terms of like watching how other people do it. So my method is absolutely slower than, you know, taking these massive chunks off. Um, but I kind of feel like by taking small pieces off, I kind of discover the animal or the figure um, in the process a little bit and uh, I can change it as I go um, if I have these real rigid solid lines that I'm cutting to or even cutting to from memory um, you know as a, as a as a means of doing something in a production way where you're making the same cuts the same figure or animal you know I don't know I, I, I don't really prefer to do it like that so so I end up making a lot of sawdust and cutting off lots of pieces. But you know, anyway, I'm enjoying myself as I go. So I guess that's all that really matters.
As I'm getting ready to do the finish elements, um, I usually try to go and get all my stuff together. So I'll get my HVLP guns, my, um, my paint, make sure that it's clean, make sure that it's mixed properly if it needs mixing. Um, and that way kind of everything is laid out. Uh, it just kind of makes everything go much faster. Um, I've got a really good air system in my studio. I've got various airports all throughout the shop and in the outside, which kind of allows me to um, use the air pretty much wherever I need it. Um, and it's way cheaper than, than using, um, you know, I see a lot. I even sometimes will use uh, spray paint um, to, to touch up something because that way I don't have to clean my HVLP gun. But anyway, um, it's really a good idea to have all your stuff together. It just makes everything go so much quicker. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching episode two of this little black bear climber. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video as much as I had fun making it for you guys. So anyway, I did actually film this in HDR, which made some of the filming kind of um, wonky, the colors and some of that technical stuff. So I do hope to improve um, each episode that I put out and make sure that it's actually interesting. So if you guys have any feedback, feel free to leave that in the comments, as well as any questions that you may have in regards to the sculpture or sculpting in general. So anyway, thanks again for tuning in to A Sculpted Life with Jeff May, and we'll catch you on the next episode.